If you're watching this video, you probably have an optic and you want some way to protect it. Now, we can all buy these secondhand lens caps. They work great for what they're intended for. But what if you want to be able to have your lenses still protected while being able to shoot? Or what if you're on a hunt and you don't have time to open your lens cap before you take that shot? It just jumps in front of you, you have a second, and you gotta shoot. Well, I think I have a solution. Lexan, it's an upgraded form of plexiglass. Um, now this stuff's really, really scratched up. And for that, this one right here especially, as you can see, super, super scratched. Now this stuff is not very resistant to scratching. It's not very resistant to heat. Now Lexan makes like six different types of products, but this is the stuff you can just pick up down at Home Depot, Home Co. You can easily order offline. They definitely make stuff that's more heat or scratch resistant. But this stuff is super impact resistant. You're supposed to use it in windows, security windows. So when people are throwing rocks at it and beating on it with a hammer, it's not gonna break. It's also not that expensive, all right? You can get it for, oh, if you buy a huge sheet, about a dollar per square foot. It's not that expensive. So, you can go down to your local home co and just buy a little piece of it. Um, sometimes they'll have just a little strip of it, a little scrap that you can get. Um, and they'll sometimes give it to you for free. This is about 75, 80 cents, but it's plenty of material. As you can see here, for some of the lenses I made, you can get a whole lot out of one little strip. I think this strip cost me $3, $4, somewhere in there. It was just a piece of scrap they had sitting around. I was able to cut all sorts of little lenses out of it. Quick test of the Lexan. I'm gonna have a bunch of guys here from Northern Arizona and Airsoft Network shoot it for me. So shout out to you guys, thanks. You're but this is gonna take a little second to get this protective coating off here. Oh, come on. Actually, you know what? Here, why don't we spin the, spin the camera around? And you guys wanna tell them what kind of BBs you're using, what kind of FPS you're shooting? I have Air, air Splat point twenties. Same. 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 Yeah. And we're shooting at about 400 feet per second. .20s at .425. I'm going to stick it on the tree over here. Make sure that's in frame. This is professional beyond belief. <laughs> so, right there. You guys want to back up a little bit? Alright. We all ready? Yep. yep. Alright. On three. One. Two, three. Hey, camera, camera guys, camera, camera fell. Hey. Oh, yeah, it's definitely scarred up pretty good, but I don't see any cracking going on. Cool. Oh, and there's actually, <laughs> there's still the protective plastic on the back. Oh, that might, might, so, that might have made a difference. Brand new. <laughs> so it's pretty doggone see-through, but there's definitely a little, I don't know how many times we shot that, but it's crazy. It looks like a bacterial slide. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. You're welcome. For this test, um, stepping it up, it can obviously take, you know, airsoft BBs ad nauseum, but we're gonna be stepping it up to right here. We have the standard, you know, Daisy steel BB. Um, I'm gonna be shooting those out of, again, a very, very standard, the, Daisy Powerline 35. We're gonna start with um, three pumps, then we're gonna move up and I'll, I'll go from there. To protect the camera, again, we're gonna be using another one of these. This time we'll pull off both protective membranes. There you go, you still see through that? No problem. All right, cool. Um, let's see, take this here. Putting it over at the branch right there. Then over branch. Here is our old thing we were shooting at. I retaped it back on there. That should be able to take a couple real good hits and not give it any cushioning. We'll step back about 10 feet and we're going to take some shots. Still no puncture. I'm going to step it up to five pumps. Still no penetration. Seven pumps. Honestly, you can tell it's a little deeper than the five, but it doesn't look that different. I'm gonna go with a nine, and then 11, and then I'm gonna switch to something else here. It's 
It's really starting to smash a serious crater in the face of this, but it hasn't penetrated. So, here's what I was saving. These are pellets right here. That's something pretty cool right there. All right. I was shooting first these guys right here at 10 pumps apiece. Then I was shooting this assortment. I was shooting the pointed nose, the hollow tip, and the flathead. And you can see most were getting there some nice little smear marks, right? Where they're kind of bouncing off. It's eating up the plastic, smearing it. Oh my gosh, there's actually a liquid or something on there. I don't know if that's gun grease or if that's some byproduct of the creation. Let me get that off there. That's real funny, but lead is doing next to nothing. Pellets aren't killing it. BBs aren't killing it. Airsoft or steel. We're stepping it up a little bit. Nothing incredible. I got a little 22 pistol right here. We're going to be shooting a couple different loads out of it, and I'm just going to totally destroy this one. We've got the CCI shot here, I'm shooting it with that once. Then we've got two different types of subsonic loads here, real short little guys. We have some just lead ones, and then we got ones that have a jacket. So I'll shoot it with the lead, then I'll shoot it with the jacket, and if by some miracle it's still standing, uh, I've just got some regular, these are Remington Thunderbolts, um, 22 long rifle. First, CCI bird shot, snake shot, whatever. That didn't do anything impressive. I'm going to take some shots at it with these guys next. Sorry, these guys right here. Got some definite deformity. Definitely tore up the tube behind it, but no penetration. That's impressive. I am so happy with this thing. All right, next up here, we've got, oop. All right, got this little guy. Chimper that up. Here it goes, jacketed subsonic wrap. Twenty-two long rifle. Um, I'm gonna shoot one more of these uh, subsonic lead tipped. See if it'll get through or not. Maybe that last one was just a fluke. Because I don't think the jacket should do that much. See that bulge right next to the other one? Right here. To start with, um, you know, just some sheets or whatever, whatever material you have. Just something thin to use as a guide, a jig for cutting. Here you can see I've actually got one that I cut some holes out of. And all you do is you're going to take Something like this. This is a full kit. You don't need a full kit if you don't have it. Your uncle has something, your grandpa has something, your friend has someone, has something. So, um, I used a few of these smaller sizes here, and what you're gonna have to do is take this piece of wood here, and you're gonna attach one of these onto there, um, and drill this hole, right? So that you got your jig. But for actually cutting the plexiglass, you can't have this center bit in there. You're gonna have a hole in the middle, and that's gonna be bad. Now these can come off in a variety of ways. Some of them, like this one here, 
um, get that back in the light. It's just a little standard screw key on there. This one, it's got a, where's that? Yeah, a eighth of an inch hex wrench. Not that hard. Once you've got that removed from there, actually let me pop this one out real quick. Just give you an idea of what I'm talking about right here. Just pop that out. This will slide out. You can take whatever hole punch you're using or circular saw blade. Oh, that's not right. There you go. Screw that on there, lock it in, and boom. You'll take your piece of plexiglass here. Set your jig on top of it. Throw it in your drill. Right? And now holding that on there real, real tight, you can fit this through whatever size hole that fits and just kick it on and get it drilling. Now, you're going to want to weight it down, clamp it down or whatever so it's not wiggling around on there because you'll start to get these funny little marks that don't look too good. Um, I've got some of those on the bigger lenses that I was testing. You'll see here, here are the, uh, here's the lens I was actually putting over the camera. You can see it's kind of got those scrape marks where it started to slide around on me at first. Then here's the other one I cut. Here's the one that I was shooting at the other day. And this stuff, man, it works really, really well. The clarity on this stuff is amazing. Um, in a little bit, I think I'm just going to take it up here and try and zoom over the ledge, maybe zoom down into the valley across the way. Yeah, there's a highway over there. That's what all this background noise is, and I apologize for that. But here we've got this plate we shot at. And I'm really liking how this turned out because, yeah, it's not that hard to scratch. Lens I had over the camera, there's already another little scratch on it. I don't know well, you can pick that up right in here. But as long as it's in your lens, it's not that important. What you're worried about is something slamming into that lens that'll actually crack it, especially with airsofting. So you can hardly even see the little divots on there, but they're there. They're blown around. You'll see all the letters down here on this stuff starting to blur. Those are all the little Aerosoft BBs. You got these steel BBs here that were shooting out of the Daisy power line. I told you I was going to get the ratings on that later. And let's see, for the BBs, those were going at 625 FPS. They were 5.1 grain steel. Um, that means they were shooting at about 5.7 joules. Those are the dots like this right here. Um, that's about 4.4 foot-pounds. Now, I stepped it up, or so I thought, to the uh, pellets and the pellets were on the range of seven and a half to maybe eight grains um, they were traveling a little slower about 605 609 fps um, which meant they had about 50 percent more power or more foot pounds at 8.9 joules and 6.6 .6 foot pounds than the bb's did the thing is they were lead and i'm sure as you saw on the image um, on the camera i was taking of it they pretty much turned to some kind of liquid and i don't know what that is that's really weird to me but I was able to come in and just wipe it off and they were gone. So then I moved up to um, the bird shot. Um, just little steel BBs didn't do too much. I think I can see one of the holes right there maybe. So then I moved it up to the subsonic rounds. Now that first subsonic round I shot was um, 710 FPS going with 29 grains. Yeah, I got that. I looked it all up on the manufacturer's site. That's where I'm getting these numbers from. Um, and then my own calculations. So that gave us 44 joules at 32 foot pounds. And it stopped those. It stopped the one right here on the corner we couldn't see very well. Um, you can see there's definitely some serious deformity coming out of that. Um, but it's solid conical. There's still quite a bit of material in there. It didn't actually thin it out too badly for that shot. So um, stopped that. Then we came in here and we shot, I'm forgetting which one is which. I think this was the next um, subsonic round. And this one was going real close to um, the sonic barrier there. This was shooting at 1080 FPS, again with 29 grains, but it had a jacket on it too, and that helped this one to punch through. Um, and then I shot the standard 22 long rifle, and I didn't actually pick up the specs on that because it was already more than we needed to actually break through the Lexan. And I might be switching up which one of these is which. This one has a bigger hole on the back, a bigger crack. You can actually see where the BB came through. You can see some light coming through on these a little bit. Some darker plastic anyway, where it overheated and broke. Uh, but then I shot the second round, and I'm kind of happy that it hit right next to this other round where there was already a small crack in the plastic. I hope you can pick some of that up. But um, it still managed to stop it. Definitely no pass-through. So it was able to stop those guys going about, um, yeah, 44 joules, which is a lot of force. Um, the other hollow points had 101 joules at 75 foot-pounds. So there was a huge jump up there that I didn't realize, which is why they were able to cleanly break through, whereas these ones were pretty handily stopped. These ones, I should say. These are the two subsonic rounds. So back to these scopes here, right? I've actually mounted it right here on the front. If you can see that, the front lens right here. So it's actually slipped between, I'll show you on the back how I did it. I just set it over the back, and then inside of this, there's a small rim, which then keeps it pinched against the front. 
So that's what that's held in there. Um, another option, and I haven't actually done it to this, this is a cheaper scope here, but let's see if you can get that to show up. There's actually a recessed um, cut into here, so there's several different cuts, as if it would have to accept two different types of threads if you were attaching an ARD or a sunshade or something along those lines to the scope. Um, and so if you get something that fits through that first set and then hits that second set and stops, it can just sit there and that'll provide enough um, support so that it won't go smashing all the way back into your lens and break it. Um, the easy fix, and if you don't have a hole saw, you don't have to cut a perfect circle to fit down against one of those real nice, because with this one, what I've done is I've just taken it and I've set it on the end of it here and then I've ran tape around the perimeter. You can kind of see that there. It's actually setting on front of it because it's much larger than it needs to be. And I've just taped it on. So it's braced against the outside rim of the, of, of the scope here. Um, and that's giving it the support it needs. So there's another way to attach it. Um, on these guys, it's similar to, oh boy, get off there. What I did on the other one, there's actually a series of different threads in here for attaching something. And it slipped through the first one, caught on the second one. And that's all that's needed there. Another idea, and this is something I haven't done yet, it's actually mounted, well it's loctited to a, a hunting rifle, so I'm not going to bring it out, but um, these guys here, these caps, it's not going to be that terribly hard to cut a hole in here, right? To, to punch out a hole and slip your Lexan in and have a brace off of the inside here. And that way, if you're out there hunting, you can just pull it up, shoot through it. But if you have the time, you can pop these open and still get that shot that you need out. So. With that said, give me one second, let me set this up, I'll zoom this across the valley, and give you a shot of just how clear some of this Lexan can actually be. Alright, so here we are, I'm looking through the scope at some ducks across the freeway. The parallax isn't perfectly set right now on the scope, but there's that, and I just want to kind of bring it out. That's this guy, looking across the highway, and there's that little pond over there. I can zoom in on that at all. Right there, those ducks, that's what we're looking at through the reeds, and so I can sharpen the image up a little bit if I keep playing with the parallax, but let's see if I can get back on this guy, zoom into here a little bit, this thing is finicky as heck, trying to get the lens at the right viewpoint, but right there, that's where they're at, um, and this again is the scope right here, and it's only got the one layer of Lexan that's up here at the top, right there on the front of it, that is not the scope itself, that is, you know, that is Lexan on top. You can hear that, that's plastic, it's not glass. So the image clarity out of this stuff is still pretty doggone good. That's not like wiped down or perfectly clean either. But even zooming way out there at, I don't know what that is, 150, 200 yards maybe? 